So, next page is now going into the course of social media and open education, ECI 831. And it's uh, basically an open access graduate course from the Faculty of Education at the University of Regina, Canada. Uh, and it's available for both for credit and non credit participants. It's held by Alec Koros. He is a professor of educational technology and media. And uh, basically, his focus has always been research related to teaching and learning, democratic media, critical media literacy, digital citizenship, openness, and social justice. One of the expressed purpose of his research and what he's doing is how can we help current and future educators understand how to use and take advantage of the educational potential offered by the tools of connectivity. So you can see now these yellow dots are a way of illustrating how we have a core group of four credit participants and Alison talks about exploring social media and open education from the organizational perspective. You can see everyone has different focus, different intentions. Brian is talking about we need to allow students to have a voice in what they want to learn. Authentic learning. My hope is to develop a community of physical educators. This goes on. It's a good illustration of how the group works because you have the core group connected to the teacher and then you have the experts, you have non-credit students all linking into the course, the course and doing their own things and joining in. And one of the first presenters Alec invited was Richard Schreien. He is professor of educational technology and design. His presentation was called Connections in Context, the birth growth and deaths of online learning communities. And he quoted the text that Brown and Thomas mentioned in A New Culture of Learning. And he's saying that in communities people learn in order to belong, in a collective people belong in order to learn. If we continue on this one, Rick has been looking at how does online communities form who is the people who join an online community and how do they actually operate? One of the main features of a community is that we need to build trust in order to create some sort of shared understanding and allow communication. He also lists a lot of different features like resilience, intimacy, Boundaries, intensity, the size, the morality within the group, context, uh, trajectory and authenticity. Trajectory is also something that if it's stagnant and not moving anywhere, it basically uh, doesn't develop. And sometimes we also have trajectory, but it's moving the wrong way. And that again creates an instable learning community. And if there is not morale and trust within the learning community, you are probably not going to experience resilience. It will be a very short term group and the learning will be more about power and positions. And also what we, we can tend to have certain boundaries around us and also levels of intimacy. So you, you need to know about each other beyond just a key topic and this build up trust again. Basically the main features of an online learning community is building trust, shared understanding and be able to communicate. And now next page where we will talk about autonomy. Autonomy uh, can be described as the capacity to act on our mental state and freedom of expression to improve one's life. And autonomy is what distinguishes between personal learning, which we do for ourselves, and personalized learning, which is done for us. This is Stephen Downs who is investigating this. And our next presenter we had on our fourth session was Shelley Terrell, an education activist and thought provoker and international speaker. 
and her presentation of course the power of personal learning networks transferring our teaching through social media and she talks about the 4c model and that's basically is connect communicate collaborating and creating and that's four steps where we are basically moving forward in a personal learning way and uh, you can see this illustration from her presentation this slide was uh, talking about what do you want to learn who do you want to connect to what's the best tool how do you want to learn how much can you invest all of these questions pop up but wherever it's possible learners should be guided and able to guide themselves according to goals purpose objectives and values at the moment the knowledge we need and that we experience is mostly based on a cross-sectional abstraction it's based on the way we understand knowledge at the moment and it has moved from being just an instruction so it's actually now instead a phenomena within a certain knowledge paradigm or knowledge area that is expressed as an individual narrative we then develop our own individual narrative by talking negotiating and the way that Brecht put it is that education is the discussion construction of shared knowledge so discussions going on and then we construct shared knowledge and this is how you validate it you validate it by that you have some sort of entity of knowledge that are reproduced by people and when everyone agrees and share this knowledge we can say that this knowledge is true in an educational setting that's normally formulated as a core curriculum and the core curriculum describes what knowledge we are supposed to achieve after a set of lessons course or studies and also another way of calling it is propagational knowledge it is sent out from a sender or from a core curriculum and uh, now the um, new model or, or another way of looking at it it's actually based on a network and the network is having different contexts and different layers where you actually have an individual that is connected to the closest people or entities in a niche this niche is then part of a society and in this case when you learn you can say it's also a community because on online learning it's not down to any physical space so it's more like a community instead of society and then the next layer is that this community exists within an ecology and that is the context so there are some outer boundaries for how this community can develop since knowledge is not constant uh, of individuals it's the interactivity in the network that can be recognized as items or entities of knowledge so if we look at this dalmatian in the picture we can see that the image is emergent out of organized pixels that are white and black and knowledge occurs in the way that this pattern is organized finally i'm going to look at this performance in a social network or domain of knowledge so if we don't look at how well we're doing in a test or how well we can reproduce an entity of knowledge we need to measure knowledge in a new way and one way of doing it is to see it as a performance in a social network or domain of knowledge originally Prensky formulated a metaphor of digital immigrants who later on became digital natives and it was more linked to generations what David White and Alison Le Corneau has done is to look of it as digital visitors who become digital residents so they distinguish that a digital resident is when the web is a place which there is a cluster of friends and colleagues whom they can approach and with whom they can share information about their life and work 
So each time we learn a new subject or a new skill, we enter as a visitor and we become more and more confident and then we can class ourselves as a resident. When we first arrive, we need instruction, we need some sort of coordinated activity that then will stop a workflow. And you know, this is industrial area. You basically don't need to know more than what's in front of you. You need to know your section in the line, you're coordinated with the rest of the people and you have a workflow that you follow. And that means that the whole production line is moving forward. Now, today our society is much more complex and that type of production is not really valid anymore. And we are now looking at each individual has to have autonomy. They need to know what they're doing, what's the purpose and how and when to do it. They also need to nurture an interest of discover because knowledge is no longer static. It's fluid and it's always changing. So we need to constantly discover new knowledge, new perspectives and follow the development. And then the next thing is also that instead of just being told how to do things, we need to uh, be able to navigate in a certain knowledge area. And this becomes a performance in a social network. That's it for now. Thank you for listening.